give you a little bit extra. So we got a little bit on the left, take another picture on the right, and give you a little bit extra on the right so you get a sense of the panoramic view of this feature as it exists today. But we still wanted to see it in stereo, but my idea was let's make a let's make these prints really big. So these two prints are really big. So if you look at them in, in a space, if they're on the wall, you can walk right up to them and you, you can look at every tiny little rock in there and you can get a sense of the color space and the details in the background and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we wanted to be able to see it in stereo as well. So we had to be able to look at it from, from the back of the room. So we had the early stereo, which you see here. Here's the stereo viewer from the 19th century, right here. And here's the stereo card. This is how they used to look in the 19th century. And I built the stereo apparatus here so you can look at the big prints from across the room. So across the room, you see this, and you see the stereo, I can't show it to you. I should see the stereo. Another stereo we made is this one. This is from uh, Depth Point, again, in the North Room. And it's a, the original stereo was made by J.K. Hillers, 1872, and uh, uh, that, or 1878. This, uh, it's a stereo within a stereo, so it's wiring within the, uh, the stereo view. So we need a stereo viewer to see it, but it doesn't work. Uh, this is a drawing by William Holmes. It was in the Dutton Report of Marble County. So he's up on the Kaibab, looking to the east at Marble County. And it's done in two parts. It's a very detailed and accurate drawing. Now, Holmes was a great draftsman. And left to right, the horizontal space is very carefully done. He exaggerated the vertical space a little bit. But we weren't sure we could find this, but we did. And when we did, we decided we would try to do something with it. When we got there, the space looks a little bit like this. You can see, if you look at the features, this is the rock ledge here that you're seeing up here. But this has foreground to it. This rock is not in the Holmes view, but we think that was the rock that Holmes sat on when he did the drawing. So we thought he sat on that rock and, and did the view. So we sat on the rock and we decided to uh, look at what Holmes was looking at. So, so we sat, we, we've been to this place about three or four different times. We spent a couple, we spent about three days there at different times. Uh, so we sat down just to sort of contemplate the view, because when Holmes did the drawing, it took him a long time. He looked at that view very carefully, so we decided to look at the view very carefully. We had our chairs, and the have got the laptop, or whatever it was. And, um, we've got this instrument, which I have right here. This instrument is a, uh, actually an artillery spotting scope. And it's really a beautiful pair of binoculars to look at things at. So we set the thing up, and we just started looking at the details in the view. And so, being photographers, we weren't, we weren't satisfied with that. We had to actually make pictures to the binoculars. So, we started looking at the view like that, and then, why don't we make some pictures for there? So, we started to make some pictures to the view that look like that. And then, well, then we, why don't we put the pictures into Holmes' pictures? So, we did that. So, we ended up putting our view inside of his view. And this is the details of the view that we were seeing on top of the view that Holmes drew. But of course, we had to add something. We had to add ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we drew ourselves into the view. We had some firing craftsmanship there. In the picture. This is a similar idea. Um, if, if you ever used one of these, I don't know, but you know, you, this is at the lookout. And uh, you know, you put a quarter in it and you get to look through the view. And the thing on the side says, you know, camera fans, this is a quality instrument. You know, you can, you can take pictures through here, so it tells you how to do it. So we thought, well, let's give it a try, you know? So we put some money in there, and we, this is the kind of view you get when you look through it. And so we started to make pictures. So we started, here's a few of the pictures that we made. Uh, you can see the Elta Bar and you can see the flag and part of the edge of it and so forth. So we ended up making pictures and we decided to make this all the pictures we could make with one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and those were all spread out in, in the actual you know space if you, if you, if you 
plaque wasn't there, it would be a full panoramic. That's all you can get for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're trying to have fun with this. This is uh, part of what we do. Uh, I'm going to finish up by showing you this particular site, which is really one of my favorites. And uh, I think it says, it told me a lot about the canyon, and it's a really a great place to visit. This is, we're on the U.S. Geologic website, uh, Geologic Survey website here, in, and I was aware of this panorama for a long time. I've always been an admirer of this. The panorama from points of line by William Holmes. And so we were at the South Rim, and we get on the website and we download this picture here, and we go, those, there's three pictures, actually, that Holmes made of points of line before the panorama. You can see, um, this is the left hand side. You can see he actually drew himself in the picture here. That's Holmes drawing and this is Dutton probably above him looking over his shoulder. So uh, we decided to get a permit and go on out to Point Sublime and take the pictures backwards. And this is the three pictures that Holmes drew at Point Sublime. But I can't stress enough how important it is and how interesting and, and, and mind changing it is to actually look at pictures where they were made from. Because it's one thing to look at them in a book, it's one thing to look at them someplace up here, but if you take the pictures back to where they came from, it's kind of like taking them back to their origins. And they can tell you something that you can't ever know about the place without them. So we, we took them back to Point Sublime and we spent two days there contemplating that view and making pictures. We have no idea what we were going to do. We just knew that we had to go there and spend some time. Take photographs and some, something would happen sooner or later. So uh, we've actually been there about four times and spent many days there. This was the first time we got We took a bunch of pictures. Um, and then the question was what to do with these photographs. The view itself is so comprehensive and so detailed, it's almost hard to imagine that you could do any better. You know, Holmes drew this in every strata, every line, is so incredibly accurate. Uh, left to right, it's extremely accurate. Up and down, it's been a little bit exaggerated, but it's, it's amazing the detail and the quality with which he drew every single rock formation in here, and all the little, the, the little canyons and, and the little erosional points and everything. And it was a very complete panoramic view, 180 degrees. What could we do that could really compare or even add to this? So as we thought about it, we were just photographing the things that we could see, the little moments that we would see that were interesting. And what we ended up doing was taking some of those moments and adding them to this picture. So we can see here, for example, uh, a view of the river. Here adding a sunrise. Because the lighting in his pictures was sort of, from everywhere, it was a sort of omnipotent kind of lighting. But the lighting that we were experiencing was very directed to very specific moments. Here's a storm over the South Rim. Here's a sunset. There's a morning light on this light from the moments. Here's a array of uh, turkey culture flying over. And then, so the entire view actually looks like this, in which we ended up taking Holmes's view of that sort of omnipotent, ever-present scene and adding on to it the little moments that we experienced. And I, I think this is sort of, to me, it taught me a lot about the experience of the Grand Canyon because every, the, the place doesn't change very much in, because, it, you know, in terms of our lifetime span, hundred years even between the photographs and what we're seeing and the photographs and what we're seeing now is insignificant. But um, the moment that you have there, that one time where things occur is significant. And so it's really a mixture of the momentary and the sort of longer, unchanging landscape. And that, I think, to me, is really something significant. And there is one thing I want to point out. Um, a lot of the foreground that Holmes is drawing this part right here, for example, these rock formations, he made up. And he 
including this part, this spot here where he's sitting. That spot where he's sitting, if you remember the spot that I showed in the last view where we were sitting to do the Marble Canyon, I think he took that for Marble Canyon and put it in here. Because it's very similar. But he made up a lot of the foreground just to make the, the view give it some foreground. The background is very, very active. The foreground is made up. There's one part of the foreground right here that I found was really kind of interesting. Look at that tree. We found a tree that was perfectly thick. So this kind of ties back to the Obamas again. <laughs> What's real and what isn't? Uh, but a lot of the view, a lot of the views, it's important to remember when it comes to the Grand Canyon that um, it's not 